Hello everyone, this Icons here, and today we're going to be talking about a little piece of wire that we all love and cherish so much, the paperclip. Most products' concepts have their origin in the same place, a consumer or user need, and the paperclip has not been any different. It all started in 1835 in New York City, when John Ireland Howe, a physician, invented a machine that was able to mass-produce straight pins. Even though straight pins became a popular way to fasten paper together, their original purpose was to temporarily fasten cloth. The first patent for the design of a clip has been assigned to Samuel B. Fay, and it dates back to the United States in 1867. Even though this clip was intended to hold tickets to fabric and not sheets of paper together. Later, in 1899, Johan Valier, a Norwegian inventor, received the German patent for the first clip intended to fasten sheets of paper together. He was granted this patent by the German patent office because at the time Norway had no patent laws whatsoever. Valier's paper clip was similar to the gem clip but not the same. Its design did not include the critical second loop that makes the gem clip much more functional. Instead, it was meant for the papers to be inserted by lifting the outer wire slightly and pushing the papers into the clip such that the rest of the clip stood out from the paper at a 90 degree angle. Valier's design ended up never to be manufactured or sold and his patent eventually expired. Even though other unpatent designs might have existed before, it was in 1901 that the American Patent Office granted Yohan the patent for the first paper clip. Its abstract characterized it by forming same of a spring material, such as a piece of wire that is bent to a rectangular, triangular or otherwise shaped hoop, the end parts of which wire piece form members or tongues lying side by side in contrary directions. It was the fact that in 1855 steel was able to deliver the right balance between strength and flexibility, while being mass-produced at a low cost, that allowed us to move from the pin to the paper clip we know today. By the end of the 19th century, nearly every shape of steel wire which you could think of that could have some sort of useful purpose has been patented from rust-free hooks, safety pins, clothes hangers, to the paper clips themselves. Middlebrook's patent drawing shows the paper clip not as the invention, but as the outcome of the patented invention. Coiled in a loop within a loop of springy steel wire, the paper clip was pliant enough to open and hold the papers in, while being springy enough to press them back together. One of the detrimental factors for the gem clip's success lied in its patented production method. And why was that? By just requiring three gentle bends and a snip, its production method was cheap and could easily be automated. During the Second World War, forbidden from wearing any buttons allusive to their king, the Norwegians took advantage of the paperclip's features to bound their shirts and jackets while using it at the same time as a rebellion symbol against the Nazi occupation. The Norwegians used the gem clip not because they thought it was a Norwegian invention, but rather because it could be easily clipped to one's clothing and was a useful item that wasn't initially a banned symbol by the Germans. Eventually, the Germans caught on and people stopped wearing the paperclip to avoid going to jail. After the war, the fact that the gem style paperclip had served as a symbol of unity resulted in the public's interest upon this incredible object. In a quest to satisfy people's curiosity, the article written by the patent agency worker and the subsequent patent filed by Valier emerged and no one seemed to be bothered to notice that Valier's paperclip design was different from the gem clip used in the protest. A paperclip can have multiple different purposes, some more legal than others. It can be twisted, pulled apart and used as a tool to allow its user to do far from the commercially productive, sanitary and morally meaningless act of clipping papers together. Paper clips have the ability to be used to pick locks, clean under fingernails, hack into phones and when straightened they can serve as a distraction to the users from the monotony of their original intended use. Being considered by many as a fetish object within the design circles, the paperclip's simple and functionally driven aesthetic, as well as its omnipresence, granted him a spot in the 2004 Mama's Humble Masterpieces show. Unlike many of our day-to-day -day objects, 
that have evolved over time in incremental ways, you would still be able to find a perfectly recognizable shiny silver paper clip on a 19th century office desk. Familiar to the contemporary eye, even on a 1984 advertisement, the minimal, functionally driven and plain aesthetics of the paperclip categorized it as the epitome of the disposable, anonymous, manufactured object. What was then a brand new technology is now, well over a century later, likely to be in the same place, ready to perform the same task. And if you think about it, that's quite amazing. At the time, the most fearless competition for the paper clip came from the iron pins. These were cheap, easy to use and disposable, although they were also notorious for staining and piercing the documents they were holding together, which ended up killing the whole purpose of their existence. The jam clip was not the first piece of steel of its kind intended to press sheets of paper together. Among the other, not so famous and effective alternatives, we could find the simple and angular fake clip, the slightly intestinal looking right clip, the Niagara clip, and the so called common sense clip. Some of these clips were either better for securing larger stacks of paper, others used less wire and were therefore cheaper, and some of them were less likely to get tangled in a box. Improving upon different aspects at the cost of raising new problems, most of its competitors haven't sustained a chance against the best-selling form of paperclip, the gem clip. As far-fetched as it may seem, the gem paperclip has even been used by Kyle MacDonald in 2005 to begin a series of trades that eventually got him a house, on top of a blog, a book and a lot of public speaking gigs. Apart from being used as a symbol or visual cue on several different instances, the paperclip has also been perpetuated as the graphical digital symbol for the attachment on most of our laptops and desktop email programs. With a society which is fast moving towards a paperless environment, the paperclip might end up being more familiar in two than in three dimensions for future generations to come. To be honest, with an unchanged office environment over the past 100 years, despite the mainstreaming of plane flights and emails, it is this environment's lack of ability to evolve that will guarantee that the paperclip will stick around for a big chunk of the foreseeable future. And these were eight of the most interesting facts I could discover about the paperclip. So, if you want to keep up to date to all the videos we post on this channel, please hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit the notification bell to let you know every time we post a new video. If there's any everyday object that you would want to see featured on this channel, please leave us a comment on the section down below. And while you're at it, feel free to smash that like button. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next one.